Hello, this lesson is on the Geology Unit Standard 3.1, the Earth's Interior. Typically, the Earth is looked at as only having three layers, the crust, the mantle, and the core. This is a very simple model of the Earth, and throughout this lesson, we'll realize that it's a bit more complex. Let's start with the simple model, though. The first and outermost layer of the Earth is called the crust. As we get a little deeper, though, we reach the mantle. The mantle is just the thick layer between the crust and the core. There are two parts to the core. There's the outer core and the inner core. The outer core is actually liquid. It's made out of iron. And the inner core is solid, also made out of iron. Here's a more detailed view of the Earth's interior. Still, we have the crust, which is the thinnest layer. Then we added the lithosphere. The lithosphere adds both the crust and the upper portion of the mantle. The next layer is the asthenosphere. It's part of the mantle, but it has its own special name because it has different properties from the rest of the mantle. Then you have the lower levels of the mantle, and then we have our core. Remember, the core is made up of the outer core, which is liquid, and the inner core, which is solid. Let's take a closer look at the crust. There are two different types of crust. There's oceanic crust and continental crust. Oceanic crust is all the crust that's underneath our oceans. I've underlined ocean and continent so you can tell the two apart. Oceanic crust is a very, very thin layer. Continental crust is much thicker, but it's actually lighter, but we'll get into that later. The crust is very brittle, which means it cracks and it breaks easily. Think about an earthquake. Have you seen how the, the crust breaks during an earthquake? Mm-hmm. That's because it's very brittle. The crust also floats on the asthenosphere. Remember we mentioned that on the last slide? Take a look back if you need to. In this image, you can see how the continental and oceanic crust kind of floats on the asthenosphere, which is partially melted. The lithosphere which is the middle layer, includes both the crust and the upper mantle. Do you see how the arrow extends all the way up to like the mountain and goes down to the asthenosphere? All of that area includes the lithosphere. The asthenosphere is the layer between the lithosphere and the lower mantle. The mantle is very thick, actually. It includes the upper mantle, the asthenosphere, and the lower mantle. The best way to think of the asthenosphere is like jelly between two layers of bread. It's kind of soft and kind of weak, and it's, it's molten or melted hot rock. The lower mantle is the largest part of the Earth's interior, and it becomes harder as you increase in depth. Now we get to the core. The core, like I said before, is divided into two layers, the outer core and the inner core. The outer core is extremely hot, so hot that the iron is actually liquid. The outer core actually creates Earth's magnetic field, which protects it from solar radiation. The inner core, even though it's, it's much more pressurized and has a hotter temperature, it's actually solid iron. Now we begin our second lesson, and here we're looking more specifically at Earth's surface. Do you remember the two types of crust? That's right, oceanic and continental. Continental crust is less dense, which means it's, kind, it's lighter and it floats higher on the asthenosphere. Oceanic crust is more dense. 
and it sinks lower in the asthenosphere. So take a look at the image on the, on the right. Do you see underneath where it says continental crust granite? It has a number there, 2.8. That's looking at its density. Remember 2.8. Now let's look at the oceanic crust. It says there basalt, and that density is 2.9. So let's just pretend that those are weights. The oceanic crust is actually heavier than the continental crust. This is important to remember. Also look at the sizes though. The continental crust is much thicker and the oceanic crust is much thinner. But because of the weight difference, the, uh, the oceanic crust still sinks lower into the asthenosphere. This is a cute image, but you can see how the oceanic crust, the continental crust, how they compare in size and how they kind of float on the asthenosphere. Isostasy, it's easiest to think of it as like a rebound. Okay, let's imagine that we have some continental crust that's really heavy under the pressure of a glacier. Okay, so look in the image in the first picture, A. You see how the crust is being pushed down under the weight of the glacier? Well, because of that, the mantle is being kind of pushed off to the sides. But look what happens in picture B. In picture B, all of a sudden, the glacier has melted, and the mantle is able to move back, popping the crust back up. And then finally, in C, you see how it's kind of rebounded all together. This happens quite often with like mountains and glaciers, but you can see how the crust is kind of, it moves, it's flexible, and depending on the weight put upon it. That actually concludes uh, today's lesson on surface of the earth and of the interior. I hope you enjoyed it and if you have any questions please talk to me or send me an email. Alright, talk to you later. Bye.